You know, I've done television now every night for four and a half years. Tonight I figured I'd do something a little different. I was going to do the TV program in my underwear. Now, these aren't just any underwear. These are a pair of magical Mormon underwear. You know, recently, Mitt Romney called me a bigot. He didn't like the things I had to say about his cult. Well, tonight, I've got a response for Mr. Romney and a challenge for Mr. Romney. So this is going to be a great program because I'm going to do the entire program tonight in my magical Mormon underwear. Stay tuned for this very special edition of Live Prayer. What problems are you dealing with in your life right now? Welcome to Live Prayer. I'm Bill Keller. I'm so glad you're with me on this Thursday night, Friday morning. Welcome to the program. Don't adjust your set. Yes, I'm doing the program tonight in my underwear. These aren't just any underwear. These are the famous, magical Mormon underwear. I'm going to tell you what makes them special so special in just a few minutes. Tonight also I'm going to issue a challenge to Mitt Romney, who recently called me a big. Of course, we're going to take your phone calls. It's going to be a great program. It really is. It's going to be one of the most unique programs we've ever done. So stay tuned because this is going to be a night that I guarantee you is going to be very informative and it's going to be a program that's going to bring a lot of truth. This is the program that's going to shine the bright light of truth on the darkness that is the satanic Mormon cult. So I'm glad you tuned in. Tomorrow night, real quick, we will be on the program. We will be doing, uh, it will be Viewer's Choice Night. So we've kind of been turning Friday night into Viewer's Choice. It will be a night you can talk about whatever you want. Next week on the program, next Thursday night, it's going to be my very special privilege to have a, a, a guest here. It's one of those few times a year that I have a guest, Ed Decker, one of the world's most sought-after authorities on the Mormon cult is going to be here. He was actually a, a priest in that cult for many years, uh, for the last 30 years since he came out of that cult and he's been saved. He's given his life, literally to bringing people out of that darkness. Incredible guy. He was the co-author of the book, The God Makers, which was one of the first books 20-some years ago that exposed Mormonism to the world. So that's coming up a week from tonight on the program. So we got a lot of great things in store. Listen, I'm glad you've tuned in tonight. I want to welcome everyone watching all throughout the greater Tampa Bay area, right here on CW44, the home of live prayer, where we've been coming to you live and in living color. Every, every Monday through Friday now for almost four and a half years. Of course, we're here every Monday through Friday from 1 to 2 in the morning. I'm glad you've tuned in. I also want to welcome everyone watching tonight all throughout the, not only Tampa Bay area on CW44, but those people watching around the nation in many foreign lands who watch this program each night via our live simulcast on liveprayer.com. I'm Bill Keller, the founder of Live Prayer, the world's largest interactive Christian website. We reach a little over 2.4 million people every day via the Internet. I'd encourage you next time you come online to visit us, www.liveprayer.com. That's the web address. It's on your screen. Jot it down. When you go to the website, you'll find very easy to navigate links, take you all throughout the site, tell you about the ministry of live prayer, my testimony, the daily devotion I write each day. There's an audio version that I record every morning. 
We've also got a devotional archive where every devotion I've written for almost eight years or almost 3,000 hours in that archive in a searchable database by keyword, topic, and date. We also have our show archive. That's where we keep our most recent five TV programs available for on-demand viewing. Live Prayer is the most unique website interactive website that exists. We have content between the daily devotional and the TV program no other website in the world has. That's why so many people come to Live Prayer each day. And I'd encourage you to visit the site. When you're there, I know everybody's got needs. Click on the prayer request link. That'll open up your email browser. Type in your requests. Send them off to us. We not only pray over every email, but we also respond back to everyone. Over 40,000 a day. Got a great team of over 700 retired pastors that work with me all over the country that help me make sure that we not only get every incoming email prayed for, but responded to. That's something no ministry of any size even tries to do. So take advantage of that. Matter of fact, let me give you my email address right now. It's bkeller at liveprayer.com. bkeller at liveprayer.com. That's how you can always communicate with me if I can help you in any way. You know, over four and a half years ago when we started this program, we were doing something then. Nobody was doing that. Everybody's doing it now. That's trying to make the whole television experience interactive by using the net in conjunction with TV. Well, for over four and a half years now, we've harnessed these two great mediums, these two great communication mediums, and we've, we've been able to marry them together and turn this whole experience into a, a very personal and interactive one. So take advantage of the email address and, again, reaching out to us any way we can help you. That's what we're here for each night to do, okay? Praise God. Now, before I get into the message tonight, let me share uh, one thing with you real quick if you weren't around. Great news on the legal front. Uh, we've been able to get delisted without having to go to a uh, legal battle with the U.K. spam firm. So praise God for that victory. We've been able to work uh, through the Microsoft issues. Again, we were prepared actually to be in federal court this morning filing suit, uh, but we've been able to uh, been able to keep from having to do that. So praise God for that. We're just very excited. Of course, we've still got the potential IRS issue hanging out there, but you know that's out of our control, and we're prepared if in fact they come knocking. So, uh, but God's been good. I appreciate your prayers. I appreciate those who've been helping us so we can cover some of these, uh, some of these legal issues that we've had to deal with. Uh, you know, again, I'm an evangelist. I have no desire to be in court with anybody, but we're going to protect ourselves. We're going to defend ourselves and we're going to make sure that nobody's illegally stopping us from doing what we have a right to do. And that's bring the truth of God's word into people's lives. So again, appreciate your prayer. Now, before I get into the message tonight, my challenge to Mr. Romney. I'm wearing these temple garments, often referred to as the magical Mormon underwear, for a reason tonight. One of the problems with the Mormon cult is they are liars. Like the inspiration of this satanic cult, Satan himself, they're liars. You know, in John 8, 44, Jesus said that Satan is the, a liar. He's the father of lies. When he speaks, he speaks his native language lying. Mormons is people who've been inspired by Satan, literally. And we're going to get into that in just a minute. Are just unconscionable liars. When you expose the true beliefs of Mormonism, a Mormon will say, no, we don't believe that. No, that's just a myth. If you talk to a Mormon about their temple garments, their magical underwear, they'll tell you they don't exist. Well, guess what, people? They do exist. I've got them on. Matter of fact, Jason, do me a favor. Behind you, give me that bag. I need that bag. Now, in case people think that, you know, this is just 
in case people think that this is just something I've created myself, let's get a let's get a close up shot of this uh, on on two. There you go. This is it. This is that's the Mormon temple. This is the official bag that the temple garments come in. You can't buy these. You can't get these down at the uh, uh, Target. You can't go to Sears and get these. Matter of fact, you have got to have a temple card to get these garments. Where I got this set, <laughs> I wouldn't tell you because the person who they would be traced back to would be literally, literally, his life would be in danger. But, but if a Mormon wants to tell you these things don't exist, now you know they're lying. I'm wearing them. Now, you may say, well, that doesn't look like anything special. Oh, but they are. These are the temple garments worn by temple Mormons 24-7. They never take them off. These garments represent the powers and priesthoods of Satan himself. This is what a temple Mormon like Mitt Romney wears 24-7. Now you say, what makes these special? First of all, give me a wide shot on two. Back two up a little bit. Cut to two real quick. No, give me a wide shot, please. Give me a, back it up, please. There you go. Back me up a wide shot on two. There you go. See, you can see this is pretty much what they are. All right, now, the symbols that exist on these temple garments are very important. Again, this looks like just a like a just some kind of a mesh undergarment. That's what it is. But it's the symbols, and you can start to see them now. On the right breast, and the, and these are actually I've told you before that the temple worship uh, ceremonies in the Mormon temple are actually nothing more than a ripoff from the Masonic cult. Joe Smith was a Mason. And he literally ripped off the Masonic cult's temple rituals and brought them into the Mormon cult, using a lot of the same symbolism. Over the right breast is the square. Zoom in on that. That represents a master mason. And again, anybody that knows anything about Freemasonry, you'll recognize these symbols. Over the left breast is the compass. Representing their truth. And then you have on the navel, the navel marking. There it is. It's on the navel. And then on the right knee, you have the other stitch marking. Now, some of you may be sitting and saying, what is the big deal? You do not understand what the big deal is. A Mormon believes that this is his shield of faith. A Mormon believes that when they have this garment on, they are indestructible. For the average person watching this TV program, you probably think, that guy looks pretty stupid sitting there in those. Because you don't really understand what these represent. For a Mormon watching tonight, the average Mormon, they think that guy's making fun of my church, or some of them may say, you know, I've never seen those before. But for the temple Mormon that may be watching tonight, I don't think I could do anything as egregious in his eyes, including slitting the throat of his child in front of his eyes than to do what I'm doing tonight and exposing the satanic temple garments of the Mormon cult to the world. Now, i got to tell you, I've had emails over the past few days. People literally telling me that wear those on TV and you won't be on TV very much longer. Wear those on TV, you won't be living very much longer. See, I'm not, I'm not intimidated by this satanic cult. You know, 
they have this fantasy that when they wear these satanic underwear, that they're invincible. Well, let me tell you something, my friend. This is the book that I live by. This is the sword of the truth of God's Word. I fear no man. I don't fear Satan. Satan can't do anything to me. What's the worst thing can happen? Somebody can kill me. I'm going to die anyway. My eternal home is secure. I know where my eternity is going to be spent. It's time that the light was sh of truth was shined on the darkness that is the Mormon cult. And let me tell you why. Again, because they're liars. Mitt Romney's a liar. And I've got, a, I've got a challenge for him tonight on this very program. And my challenge starts very simply this way. Mr. Romney, show me your underwear. That's right. Mr. Romney, show me your underwear. You know, when asked about my recent statement that a vote for Romney is a vote for Satan, Romney, through his spokesman, replied, it shows that bigotry from time to time can still rear its ugly head in society. The game in 2007 is to label anyone who has the audacity to bring a biblical worldview to the issues of the day as hateful, intolerant, a bigot, or other names to try and discount what they say and silence them. Since Mr. Romney wants to try and dismiss me simply as a bigot, I'm publicly challenging him tonight to take off his jacket, open his shirt, and let the world see that as a temple Mormon and high priest in the satanic cult, he wears under his clothes literally 24-7 the sacred undergarments of the priesthood given to him in the temple ritual that bear the emblems of Satan's power and priesthoods. That's right. They bear the symbols of Satan's power and priesthoods. And I'm going to be, of course, wearing this on the program tonight that you can go back and watch on our show archives. Now, for my new friend, Barry Lynn, of Americans United for Separation of Church and State, like my May 11th message on how a vote for Romney is a vote for seven, Satan, this message tonight has nothing to do with politics. This is about the eternal souls of men. I've never told people who to or not to vote for. That's not what I do. While Barry Lynn's mission in life is to oppose the work of God and watch people die and go to hell, my mission is to bring his truth to this dark world and lead people to everlasting life through faith in Jesus Christ. Mr. Romney, like all members of his satanic cult, is a liar. A liar. He goes out on the campaign trail, talks about his belief in God, in Jesus, in the Bible, and that he's just like any other Christian. You see, he's calculated that the theologically ignorant and politically correct secular media will never have the guts to challenge him on what he refers to as his faith or his church. You know, just moments before going on with Bill O'Reilly a few weeks ago, in my earpiece came O'Reilly's voice telling me that he did not want me to get into the specific beliefs of Mormonism, that he didn't want to go there. You see, the secular media, on one hand, really doesn't care what their theological beliefs are, and on the other hand, they don't want to be seen as bashing someone's religion. You know, Romney's been very clever and calculating in perpetuating the lie that he's a Christian, by attracting mainline evangelical figures like Jay Sekulow, many others to support his candidacy. Sekulow and any other Christian leader that support Romney should be held accountable by the Christian community for backing a member of a satanic cult that's leading the souls of men to hell. They've sold out the truth of the Bible and Jesus Christ just like Judas did for whatever short-term political power they may receive if Romney would get elected. There is no justification for their endorsement and support of a man whose influence will attract people to his cult, knowing that those who follow the lies of Mormonism will die and go to hell. Now here's a few 
of the theological issues that make the satanic Mormon cult totally inconsistent with biblical Christianity and why a Mormon is no more a Christian than a Muslim is. These are the things the lying Mitt Romney won't tell you, so I will. The God of the Mormon cult is not the God of the Bible. Their God is named Elohim and was once a man like you and I who came from another planet. Mormon theology teaches that men can eventually become a God and have their own planet. Romney, as a member of this cult, believes that he too will one day become a God. When he talks about God, he's talking about this fictitious God of Mormonism, not the God of the Bible. This holds true for Jesus. The Jesus of Mormon theology is not God incarnate as the Bible teaches. The Mormon Jesus was not supernaturally conceived by the Holy Ghost, but the natural offspring of their God Elohim who had sex with Mary, meaning he's a created being no different than you and I. Mormons also teach that their Jesus had several wives and children, again in complete contradiction to what the Bible teaches. The Jesus of Romney and the Mormon cult is also the brother of Lucifer and will return not to the Mount of Olives as the Bible teaches, but to Independence, Missouri to set up his earthly kingdom. When Romney talks about Jesus, he is not talking about the Jesus of the Bible. Listen to me. What Jesus you put your faith in is so critical since this is why anyone who puts their faith in the imaginary Jesus of Joseph Smith and the satanic Mormon cult will die in their sins and their souls will burn forever in the flames of hell. What about the Bible and true Christian churches? Mormons love to use the Bible and quote from the Bible to support their deception that they're Christians. The trademark of all cults and false religions, even those who use the Bible, is that it is not their final authority. In the Mormon cult, their authority does not come from the Bible, which they view as incomplete and not reliable, but the writings of Smith, the Book of Mormon, the Pearl of Great Price, and the Doctrine and Covenants. These are the writings that form the false theology of this cult. They believe that non-Mormons are abominations. While they don't have the guts the Muslims do to publicly call a non Muslim and infidel who should be put to death. A Mormon views a biblical Christian as part of a false religion and void of all authority. Mitt Romney believes a Bible-believing Christian, the very people he's courting so hard, are an abomination. Like in all cults, the average member hasn't got a clue what their cult really believes. You only get to know everything after you've proven yourself to be a loyal and worthy member of the cult. That's true in the Mormon cult as well. Most Mormons go to their church, sing many of the same hymns they sing at the Baptist church down the road. They give their tithe. They read a few passages out of the Bible. They hear a message about being a good person, and they go home. It's only when you become a temple Mormon that you really learn all of the deep, dark beliefs of Mormonism. The Mormon temple rituals, as I stated earlier, are actually little more than the temple ritual Smith copied from the cult of Freemasonry. Smith, who was involved in the Masonic cult, simply copied and incorporated their chants, their handshakes, their ceremonies when he started the Mormon cult. These are the same chants, handshakes, and ceremonies Mitt Romney participated in when he took his oath to the Mormon cult above everything else, including the U.S. government and Constitution. The average person has no idea that the ultimate goal of the Mormon cult is to establish a theocracy here in the United States. Joe Smith, the cult's founder, actually ran for the presidency. So did Romney's father. This cult has the very real goal of establishing the kingdom of God, which means advancing the physical and earthly organization of the multi-billion dollar Mormon cult. Do you know there's a special room in the Mormon temple located in Washington, D.C. that's been prepared and in place for over 30 years, which will be the seat of power for the Mormon-led government, which will supplant our current government? This was the vision Joe Smith laid out less than 200 years ago, and Mitt Romney, those who are in the hierarchy and leadership of the Mormon cult, see this is the exact time for that vision to be fulfilled. 
Listen, I've done my best in a limited amount of time tonight to give you a brief overview of the false and satanic beliefs of the Mormon cult. I've just barely scratched the surface. But just in what I've shared with you tonight, nobody in their right mind could ever believe a Mormon is a Christian. When you study Mormon theology, understand the wild beliefs of Smith and his cult, you need faith greater than I will ever hope to have to believe what they do. There's no logic to it, and there's absolutely nothing they believe that has any basis in reality or can be proven. The mythical gold tablets Smith said he found. Men who become gods and have their own planet where they have many wives and create spirit babies. I'm telling you, it all makes Star Trek look believable. The Mormon cult shares some of the same scientific fantasies of the Scientology cult, dreamed up by that science fiction writer L. Ron Hubbard. It also has some of the elements of the false religion of Islam, in that they believe that all non-Mormons are an abomination and they will one day rule the earth. As I stated earlier, they also have taken some of the dark, satanic rituals of the Masonic cult and incorporated them into their temple ceremonies. Listen, Mitt Romney, those in the Mormon cult, they can believe whatever they want. God gave us free will. Men who live in rebellion to God since the very beginning have dreamed up the wildest and most ridiculous things, and sadly, people who are spiritually void chose to believe their lies and will be lost for all eternity because of it. My main point is that they be honest and truthful about what they believe. The danger of Mormonism is that they're deceptive. Just look at their name, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And they will lie without conscience, just like the father of lies, Satan, to get people to join their cult. The secular media has got to be responsible enough to tell people what the Mormon cult really believes. They simply can't give Romney a pass when he talks about his faith and his church. They need to have the guts to tell people what his faith and church really believe and challenge him when he uses words like God, Jesus, and the Bible. Don't take my word for it. There's a wealth of information easily accessible out there by thousands of people who were once part of this cult. There is 100% proof and documentation of all that the Mormon cult believes. When you challenge a Mormon on their beliefs, they'll flat out lie to you. You know, recently I was in a debate with a Mormon apologist, Scott Gordon, on the Alan Combs radio program. And I addressed many of the issues I've talked about tonight, plus things like their belief that you can pray for someone who's dead to be saved, their belief that black people have been cursed. And each time, this Mormon apologist flat out lied about what they really believe. So I'm calling for Mr. Romney to take off his jacket, unbutton his shirt, and let the world see that he wears the sacred undergarments of the priesthood that bear the emblems of Satan's power and priesthoods. I'm calling on Mr. Romney to stop lying and deceiving people that he believes in God, Jesus, and the Bible, and tell the people that the God he believes in used to be a human being who evolved into his status as God, as he plans to do one day. That is, Jesus is not deity, but a created being who can't save your soul. And the Bible's imperfect, and his final authority are the writings of Joseph Smith. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking, Mr. Romney. Just tell the people what your church really believes. Amen. All right. Let's get into the phone calls tonight. And you know, I get the emails every night. I know there's a lot of Mormons that watch this program. I pray tonight that you have the courage to call me tonight. I'm going to hear a Mormon get on the phone and tell me that these temple garments don't exist that I made up this bag, that I just made these up. I want to hear a Mormon get on here and tell me that these garments don't exist, that temple Mormons don't wear these 24-7. I want a Mormon to get on the phone tonight and tell me that their God is the God of the Bible and not this God who was once a human being that his planet happened to be Earth. My phone number is coming up on the screen right now. It's area code 
727-576-7884. Clear the banks and start calling. Again, if you want to, you know, this is what we're talking about tonight. If you got prayer requests, please email them to me. I want to focus on this tonight. This is important because it's time the deception stops. It's time the lies stops. I, I would, I'm hoping tonight that there's some Mormons out there with enough courage to call up and try to defend what your cult really believes. Call me up and tell me I'm a liar. Tell me that you don't believe Jesus and Lucifer are brothers. Call me up and tell me that you don't believe that salvation isn't through faith in Jesus Christ, but through Joseph Smith. Call me up and tell me that you don't believe you're going to die one day and you're going to become a god and have your own planet. If you want to call tonight and just talk about uh, some of these false beliefs, that's fine. 727-576-7884, that's my number. This is your opportunity. Let's start tonight with Joe and Golf Part. Hello, Joe. Hey, Bill. Yes, sir. Hi. It's like you call up and say things you shouldn't say. It gets bleeped before it ever gets on the air. So, But I appreciate you calling. Obviously, I knew tonight's going to be a crazy night because I'm literally taking a stick and poking Satan right in his big, fat face tonight. Ryan in St. Pete. Hello, Ryan. Um, I have a question. If you're sure. wearing your uh, little garments there, yeah. isn't that like um, committing a sin yourself? Nope. Appreciate you calling. Let me tell you something. Appreciate you calling, my friend. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. These, these special temple garments of the Mormon cult do nothing to me. Let, me. let me tell you something. Do you know how many witches, quote unquote, witches and warlocks have put curses on me over the years? I probably get five a week. I probably get emails, five emails a week from witches and warlocks and all these satanic people that have cursed me and this and that. <laughs> I'm covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. No fear at all. But it's a good question. It really is. It's a good question. As a believer in Christ, we don't have to fear these things. Let's go to Mike in Winter... I'm sorry, Makia in Winter Haven. Hello, Makia. Hi there. Hi. Hey. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'd like to say I think you're a very good man because I never thought that these people are fake because they think they say so much stuff like Christians do. Sure. Um, and I don't like the black thing, so I couldn't never join that cult because I happen to be black. Yep. Well, they believe you're, they, they believe you're black because you're cursed. So that... But God all made, made us. Absolutely. Mickey, I appreciate you calling. It's just an example of how warped their thinking really is and how warped their beliefs are. Um, and you're right. That like, you know, like I said earlier, they're very deceptive. They want people to believe they're Christians. They want believe, people to believe they're just like the Baptist church down the road. But you can obviously tell by just a little bit I've shared that. I haven't even gone into 99% of it. I've just given you a little taste off the top, just so you can see just from that alone how absolutely crazy their theology is. Let's go to Mike in St. Pete. Hello, Mike. Hey, Bill. How are you doing? Good, sir. can't talk fast enough. You can't out-talk an eight-second delay. Chad in St. Pete. Hello, Chad. Hey. Yes, sir. You're on, you're on the air. Okay, you're gone. Kevin in St. Pete. Hello, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Hey, how you doing? Um, uh, I really like you in those underwear a lot. Well, I appreciate that, Kevin. Have, yeah. a, have a good night. Let's go to Shane in Sarasota. Hello, Shane. Yes, sir. You're on the air. It's uh, been a long time. I've been trying to call you for the past couple of nights. How can I get through to you? How can I help you? Um, I just would like you to say a prayer for me. Okay. 
What's going on in your life? Um, I'm sorry. I need to turn the TV on because I'm getting feedback. Um, I'm just really depressed. Um, I'm an aspiring firefighter. I'm already an EMT paramedic. Okay. And I'm what? just very what? depressed. And when I look around the world, I don't see God fearing people. I don't know if that's an issue or not. But what, what, let me ask you a question, Shane. Where are you at spiritually? You go to church at all? Uh, no, sorry, I don't. Let me ask you a more important question. Have you ever given your life to Jesus? Yes, sir, I have. Okay. Well, let, I'll tell you what. Let's do me a favor because we're kind of staying on topic tonight. Hold on for me. I want one of our ministers in the back to talk to you. So okay. they, hang on for me. Don't go anywhere. And, Thank you. Uh, and we'll, we'll minister to you and we'll help you any way we can, my friend. I appreciate you calling and, and we're going to be praying for you. Father, be ashamed tonight. I lift him up to you. God, I don't know what's causing his depression, but Lord, if he knows you as his Savior... He should know joy, not depression. He should know peace, not depression. Lord, I pray tonight that our ministry team in the back will uh, be able to talk to him and work out whatever his issues are and pray for him and help guide him so he can come to that place of joy and fulfillment in his life. So be with him tonight. Bless him. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll be praying for you, my friend. God bless you. Let's go to Sean and Brandon. Hello, Sean. Hello, Sean. All right, let's go to Jeff in Plant City. Hello, Jeff. How you doing, brother? Good, sir. How can I help you? All right. Um, it's been a while since I talked to you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I used to be. I used to belong to the uh, J. W. cult. To the what? To the Jehovah's Witnesses. Yes, sir. Another another hideous cult. Yeah, I, I was raised up in it, and if you ever decide to do a show on them. I'd be glad to come on and uh, explain some things. But I, let me say this. Yeah. There's one way you can prove to these cults, uh, I mean, to the people that belong to these cults, there's one way you can prove to them that they're false, and it's really the only way, and that is to have copies of their writings. Yeah. I have copies of their watchtowers and sure. the weights from the, from the late 1800s sure. that I can show to, to the people yeah. to prove what I'm saying, and they don't have to just take my word for it. And the same with the Mormons and the Scientology, too. You're exactly right. I appreciate you calling, Jeff. That's the hallmark. That's the key. That's the linchpin to these cults. Even if they're deceptive, like the Mormons and the JWs, and they use the Bible, the truth is, though, that's not their final authority. Their final authority is the writings of the cult's founders. In the case of the JWs, Charles Taz Russell and the Watchtower Society, that's where their theology comes from, not the Bible. That's where their authority lies, not the Bible. Their authority is not in God's Word, but in the ramblings of these men who, in open rebellion to God, dreamed up these false religions and these cults. But God bless you for being delivered, coming to the light. God bless you, Jeff. Let's go to Luke and St. Pete. Hello, Luke. Hi, right, Bill. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm a first-time watcher, and uh, I really like your show and all, but I'm a Mormon, and I'm willing to meet the challenge of a Mormon calling on the show. Good. What, what, what Mormon church do you go to? Um, I go to the Mormon church of St. Pete. Yeah. So, so tell well, me. I, I, well, just go, I, I disagree with what you're saying, so and tell, I've so, never so, seen so, anybody so, wear that. So, so, tell me, so tell me what I've said tonight that's not true. Pretty much everything that you said about us being satanic worshippers. Really, really. If you're, if you're are you a are, shirt, are, I don't believe that the blood of Jesus is saving you because are, are you a temple? Are you a temple Mormon? Them. Yes, I am a devout Mormon. Are you I, a temple Mormon? Do you wear the what, under, do you wear the undergarments of Satan? No, sir. I have never seen anybody wear that except yes. you. Yes. Good night. See, if if in fact he was being truthful about being a Mormon. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Uh, they will flat out lie. I mean, I'm sitting here tonight with the with the symbols of the priests and the powers of Satan. Powers and the priests of Satan on my body. This is what the Temple Mormon wears 24/7. 
that they'll deny it even exists. Let's go to Dawn in Bradenton. Hello, Dawn. I am a born-again, spirit-filled Christian. Amen. Of many years. Praise God. I am the daughter of a Mormon mother. I have I was taken on tour mm. to temples. Couldn't get inside the inner part, but right. I saw the history laid out. Yep. She wore the garment. Yep. Is is what I'm wearing tonight the real deal? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> and and although they say, uh, well, we don't wear them as much as we used to before, they do exist. They did exist, yeah. and and one of the biggest arguments will be, oh, but you only know what you've been told. Right. And I keep looking at her like, well, you only know what you've been That's told. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> right. So God bless you. Thank you, Don. Bye. And you know we're very fortunate now to have uh, people like Ed Decker, and literally thousands of people out there that over the years have had the courage and and have come out of this cult and as they've come out they've had the boldness and the courage even to the point of death in some cases to expose what really happens and again like in all these cults the day in and day out member doesn't have a doesn't have a clue really like I said, most Mormons, they go to their church on Sunday, they hear about giving to the poor, they give their tithe, they sing a few hymns, you know, Rock of Ages, and I love to tell the story, and all the great hymns of the, of, of the church. And they think they're Christians. It's only when you get to that next level that you start to hear what they really believe. And you understand the satanic nature. And it's only when you get to be a temple Mormon and you go through the rituals and, and you're part of the of the plays, the Garden of Eden reenactment and all of those things that you really start to understand just how... But at that point in time, they've got you locked in. And you literally, are, you literally you've bought into it, which is a shame. Bless you, Don. Let's go to Ryan in Odessa. Hello, Ryan. Hey, hey, how's it going? Good. Uh, some of the radio personalities, uh, like William Beck, he claims to be a Mormon. Uh, do you believe that he's uh, lying? Uh, actually, appreciate you calling. Glenn Beck, uh, now that's a guy I've been trying to, uh, my PR people have been trying for a couple years now to get me on with him. He's scared to death of me. Glenn Beck is a Mormon. He also claims to be a born-again Christian. The two are absolutely incompatible and inconsistent with each other. You can't be a Mormon and be a born-again Christian. Now, Glenn Beck is either a very uh, new Mormon and he just he's just theologically challenged. He hasn't got a clue what he really believes, which could be the case, giving him the benefit of the doubt, or he could be like Mitt Romney, and he's evolved, and he's a temple Mormon, and he wears the, 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 the sacred garments 24-7, and he's just flat out lying and deceiving people. Love to get on with Glenn one-on-one -on -one and find out what he is. Just a theological, theologically challenged individual who really doesn't understand or whether he's just a pure deceiver. But uh, we're going to keep trying. Thank you, Ryan. God bless you. Obviously, Glenn Buck doesn't want anything to do with me because I'm going to sit there on the show and tell people the truth about what his cult believes. He doesn't want that. David in Tampa. Hello, David. Hi, David. You feeling good tonight, Bill? I'm always feeling good, man. I, I, yeah. every, day, every day is a great day. All right. I got a couple questions for you. Sure. Number one, why are you wearing this ridiculous outfit on television? Have you been watching? No, sir. I just tuned in. Oh, uh, well, you go back and watch the show tomorrow. Number two, Colin. 
Let's go to Steve in Sarasota. Hi, Steve. Uh, hi, Dr. Shoy. Very courageous. But, uh, Masons and the Shriners, I don't see how they're in, in religion or cults. What I know of them, they don't seem to be either one. Appreciate you calling, Steve. You, your phone's really messed up, I, but that you made, you brought out a good point. I really don't want to get into that tonight, uh, but let me tell you something. Like the Mormons, the Masons and the Shriners, when you think about the Masons and Shriners, what do you think about? The kids' hospitals, all the good works they do. Well, you know what? That's what the Mormons do, too. They're, they do great works, but good works don't save you. If you really study Freemasonry, if you understand, again, the satanic roots, the, these symbols, these markings of the powers and priesthood of Satan, these literally came from the Masonic cult and were simply incorporated into the Mormon cult. This stuff originated from Freemasonry. And when you read and understand what really happened, again, most Masons, they go to their little clubhouse once a week, they sell a few Christmas trees, they give some money to some sick kids, and, 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 and that's it. But when you evolve to the next level of Masonry, when you become a Shriner, a 33rd degree Mason, and you're involved in the rituals and the handshakes and the ceremonies, then you start to understand, or at least you're exposed to, the dark satanic nature of that cult. But I'll do, you know, since I'm, since I'm talking about it, I will deal with that one of these nights very soon. Because again, I know there's a lot of people deceived by, the, by, by them as well. Let's go to Deborah in Thonasassa. Hello, Deborah. Hey, Bill Keller. Yes. I just want to let you know you're awesome. Thank you. Your prayers does come true mm. with God's help. Amen. And I don't care if you're Mormon or whatever belief you are. There's only one God. That's right. And God does answer prayers. Absolutely. And I'm telling you, you're a mighty man from God. Well, I appreciate it. Because that, you man. have answered my prayers, but I still need your prayers. We don't will... get me wrong. They're coming to me. We will I'm pray... getting my handicapped child back. Amen. And I'm still trying to get her baby back for her. Well, listen, listen. But there's also another grandbaby right. and Bob that the state took away right. for no apparent reason. My daughter was taken away. My daughter's baby, her only his daughter, hmm. she's got two sons. Her only his daughter was taken away because of Bunny. Hmm. Okay, this guy was on crystal meth. Well, Deborah, 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 we will pray for your family and we'll continue. Uh, listen. God's the one that answers prayers. All I can do is stand in agreement with you, believe in faith with you for your family, and we'll continue to do that. And we're going to continue to see God move. And my prayer for you and all your family is that each one will really turn their hearts and lives to the Lord because that's when God can really start moving and working, when people are yielded to Him and available to Him. But we'll be praying. God bless you, dear. Let's go to Miranda in Bradenton. Hello, Miranda. Hi, Mr. Keller. Hi there. I, I'm not sure exactly what I, um, I have a problem. I'm not exactly sure how to believe in God. Okay. I was raised in a Christian household. Okay. Um, I believe God sent his son down right. for us. He died on the cross for right. us. I right. believe that. I know it in my head. Right. How do I believe it in my heart? Let me ask you a question. Do you believe you've ever committed a sin? Oh, I know I have. Sure. And the Bible says we've all sinned and fallen short of God's glory. All of us. Mm -hmm. Do you believe you're going to die one day? Yes. Sure. We all are. Here's what it really boils down to. We've got to each one, in their own way, in their own time, have got to come to a place in our life where we accept the fact that we're, we're sinners, we accept the fact that, you know, this life is, is brief and make the decision where we want to spend eternity. And we either want to choose to be with God or not with God. And here, here's what it really boils down to. 
it's not just eternity, but it's this life as well. Because when we follow God, even though we all have problems, at least life makes sense and it works. But when we're living in rebellion to God, not only do we have the normal problems of life, we get all the problems that come out of our sin and our rebellion to God. And a lot of it really, Miranda, boils down to making life work on a daily basis. And I'm just telling you, the reason the Bible is true is because when we live by it, life works. And when we don't, life just, it's a mess. It's a mess, you know? And, you know, you have got to come to the same place I did and everybody does, where at some point we, re we realize, hey, you know what? Life is only going to make sense if I really make a commitment to God, to Christ, to His Word. And at that point, it's not only making sense now, but a byproduct of that is you've got the assurance of everlasting life and eternity when, with God when this brief journey is over. So, you know, there's no, there's no magic words. There's no, there's no everybody is different in, in how they come to that place. But it literally, and let me tell you something, Miranda. It's no accident you're watching this program tonight. And I've got about four or five more minutes. I, I'm going to take phone calls. And I've got a very special message at the end tonight. And it's for you. So don't go anywhere. Well, let me get to Corey in Lake Wales. Hello, Corey. Hello. Yes, sir. Um, why do you look like a hedgehog? Good night, Corey. Let's go to Joseph in St. Pete. Hi, Joseph. Hello, Bill. Yes, sir. What a pleasure for callers tonight. Hey, man, it, it, when you unleash the, 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 the demons of hell, that's what happens. Oh, Bill, 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 Bill. Listen, uh, I just would like to say that um, I disagree with a lot of a lot of the statements that you're making. I don't know where you get your information. But are, are you a Mormon? Bias. I guess you could call me a Jack Mormon. Okay. I don't know if you know what that is, but that's a Mormon that doesn't practice. Sure. What, what, what statements did I, tonight did I make, Joseph, that aren't true? Well, Mormons are Christians, and they do believe... Really? How, how could you be a Christian when you think God, Jesus and Lucifer are spirit brothers? Lucifer was a fallen angel. Now, pretty much everybody in your business knows that. But, um, let's, let's, let, you know... So, 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 <laughs> how, so, so, no, no, no. so how does Jesus and Lucifer become brothers? Listen, Bill, I just want to say that... that you don't want to answer that Christian, question? Listen, Bill, can I just ask, say this? As, as a Christian, I know that... this. The spirit Joseph, of the you're not a Christian. Listen to me, Bill. The Spirit of the Holy Ghost will tell you what truth is. Yeah. And there's a lot of truth. And I know that you've got this thing about lying. When somebody believes... Hey, Joseph, let me ask you a question. How, how can your sins be forgiven if your Jesus isn't God? You're wrong there, Bill. Uh, I'm wrong? You, you, the Mormon cult, the is, Mormon is cult believes up. Jesus was a created being. He that's was created by that's sex. That's just not true. I don't know where you come up with... Oh, nothing. okay. Good night, Joseph. A typical lying... What did I tell you guys at the beginning? I told you. Now, don't take my word for this. There are books. There are... There is countless, countless materials available by people who've come out of the Mormon cult. Matter of fact... If you really want to get serious, go read the Book of Mormon. Go read the Pearl of Great Price. Go read the Doctrine and Covenants. And then you'll see what a liar people like Joseph are. You can't be a Christian and be a Mormon. Because the Jesus of Mormonism is not the Jesus of Nazareth. Which means your faith is in a false Jesus and you are still in your sins and you're, you will die and burn in hell. That's the reality. As much as people like Joseph want to sit there and lie through their teeth. Dawn in Bradenton. Let me get this real call real quick. Hello, Dawn. Hi, Dawn. All right, let's go to Tim real quick. Hello, Tim. Tim. Bill, are you there? I only got a minute, man. Talk to me. What do you need? Okay, here. Um, I'm a first-time watcher of your program. Yep. And I'm, I'm from Tampa by way of Salt Lake City. Okay. So I grew up in Utah. Are you a Mormon? Um, I like the last caller, Joseph, I guess you could call me a Jack Mormon, but I have a couple different perspectives than he does. Sure. Um, my whole life, I lived, I lived in Utah County, which is Provo, 
yep. uh, where BYU is located. Yep. It, it, where I'm from, that's where the majority of Mormons live in the state. Sure. Uh, my parents are devout Mormons, temple goers. Uh, my brother's been married in the temple, missionary, all that kind of stuff. I, I just want to get the message across to your view, viewers now. I have always believed what you believe, that there is something wrong with the religion as a whole. It, it uh, underlined, but the Mormon people are good people. Yeah, now you talk, you, so you talk about the people who go to church, yeah. and they're like lambs led to slaughter through some kind of satanic message. That's exactly what they are. Exactly. But, but they are very good, good sure. people, and I don't know where you are getting your bone to pick with these people. Here, here's the problem, Tim. It's not the fact that they're good people or bad people. It's the fact that they bought a lie from hell and they're going to die and burn in hell because now, of okay, the now, lie. Now, okay, now, my mother and father and brother and everyone else have wore, gar have wore garments ever since I've known them. They've and worn I, these and garments, I, and right? Th th those garments you're wearing now, are they're, those are the newer version of garments. Yep. They, used to, they used to be made of cotton yep. and that kind of stuff. But um, my parents... My parents have never once shown me any kind of satanic advocate signs before. I've, I've, Do you know what these symbols mean? Yeah, I've studied, I've studied the masonry. I've studied okay. the Illuminati. So you know. But, I've, but, I'm tell, but I'm telling you right now, that I, I just don't get where, where you're getting your bone to pick with the Mormon religion. Did the Mormon do something to you? To... Appreciate you calling, Tim. It's got nothing to do with that. It's the fact that these people are following a lie to hell. It's just like when I get on here and... and, and, and and preach about the false religion of Islam. There's a billion people out there following the lies of, 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 of Muhammad to hell. That's my problem. It's not I've got a bone to pick with them. I don't want to see these people burn, Tim. I'm sure your mom and dad are great people. I don't see them die and go to hell. But they're following the lies of Joseph Smith to their eternal peril. That's my problem. That's what this is all about. You got a guy like Mitt Romney out there deceiving people, trying to lead, you know, leading people in, in, into, the, into these lies that are going to lead their souls to hell. That's my problem. It's not that they're bad people. It's not that I have a bone to pick with them. First of all, I'm trying to warn people of what, these, of what this cult really believes so they don't get locked into their lies and they die and go to hell. And hopefully, people like your parents might wake up and, and realize what foolishness they bought into and the problem is the foolishness they bought into is going to be is going to cost them their soul father right now i pray for every person out there watching tonight that they'll open their hearts to your love and your truth to the jesus of the bible not following these false jesuses these fictionary gods and these fictionary jesuses but the true jesus of nazareth in christ's name i pray amen listen i love you i care about you so much you have a great night tonight. I'll see you tomorrow night in just 23 short hours. God bless you.